Welcome to the Homestead Podcast. You are joining co-hosts Carol and Jamie of TwoGalsHomesteading.com. If you found yourself here, that means you are ready to take responsibility for what you eat, your family's health, and your family's well-being while living a simpler life. You can do this and have fun, saving money along the way. Let them help you unleash the homesteader within. By doing more with less, you will gain what is needed to create confidence, impact, and change in your life and the lives around you. Let's start homesteading, let's start now. We'd like to thank PicoSupply.com for co-sponsoring our podcast. Today I have Kelsey from dffarmstead.com. Joining me today as my co-host, Jamie is busy today cleaning out her freezer. She made the mistake of opening up her freezer and discovered that she had way too many soup bones, chicken bones, beef bones, pork bones, whatever. And so she's busy canning today. So she's not joining us. And we are going to be talking about broth and stock probably in an upcoming episode since she's now an expert. Welcome, Kelsey. Thanks for having me. We've had Kelsey here before, and we talked a little bit about having a family cow. And so we thought we'd talk a little bit more about that because I have, at one time, I had a single milking cow. And she has one cow, mm -hmm. and she is looking at expanding her herd. That is why she is actually here today. This the, this recording is just a bonus for us. She's actually here looking at one of, or two or three of my cows to add one to her herd. Because she's going to have a herd now. Yes, <laughs> it will be a herd. Yes. So... Um, let's start out a little bit. Um, now you purchased Poppy from me. I looked it up in my records mm -hmm. and it was the 11th of June yep. in 2022. So you've had her for six, six months. months or so. And you did purchase her as a bred cow. Mm -hmm. And then she calved for you in July, July yeah. of 2022. Yep. So you had her a mm, little over a month mm -hmm. Yep, before she calved. Let's talk just a little bit now. We might be repeating a few things that we talked about in our last time, but we're just going to go over so we get a big picture of what, what you did or whatever. So my first question is, why did you decide you wanted a family milk cow? So the biggest reason why is because we were sick and tired of searching for a raw milk source. Our, I guess you could say, end goal with our farmstead, homestead, is to be self-sufficient, um, making our own cheese growing our own beef, having, you know, everything coming from our property. Um, and so a cow meant we would be able to have our own source of milk, therefore having our own cheese, and also have a little bit of an income off of the extra milk we don't use. Okay. And, okay, so obviously you live on a farm mm -hmm. or on a farm site. Yep. So how big is your farm site? Not very big. <laughs> it actually really isn't. So two would be the max that we could safely have on two our acreage. Two, two cows. Two cows? Yep. Okay. Full-size cows. So that's where the calves come in. They'll be butchered every other year, go or give or take. So that's kind of what we're trying to figure out with the breeding cycles and uh, having milk on and off with two cows. So this is going to be completely new territory for us. <laughs> trying to Trying to figure everything out and... Make it work for us. Okay. So. Okay. Yeah. So when, when I started out, I, I started out, we actually started out with dairy goats first. Mm -hmm. We had gotten some goats from the Humane Society. They had been taken from the Humane Society and they needed a farm for them. And I had a friend who worked for the Humane Society and she's like, hey, you want this herd of eight goats? You know, it was, it was seven <laughs> does and one buck. And they were all bred and they were boar goats. Okay. And so we brought them out here and um, we click, quickly learned that milking a boar goat if you have a bottle kid, mm -hmm. baby goat, um, does not work real well. Really? They, they really don't milk great. No. <laughs> well, because they're meat. They're, they're meat. meat. Yeah, yep. they're meat. And so then we ended up with a dairy goat, and then we got a few more dairy goats, and blah, 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 blah. Anyway, and then we're like, mm, nobody really enjoyed goat milk in our house. So yep. I was still buying raw milk from another farm to feed our family. I was making cheese and stuff mm -hmm. out of it but we didn't drink the goat milk um somebody was here had bought some pigs from us and he's like you know i've got a dairy cow he had a steer or something and had kicked him oh. and his girlfriend freaked out he was in a wheelchair he was, okay. he was a, a paraplegic mm -hmm. and he's like i've got this cow and now my girlfriend is scared to death that she is going to kick me and knock me out of my chair and so we understandable thought, yep we thought maybe we should do goats and so what i did was we exchanged a bunch of goats for one dairy cow okay so that's how i got my cow and how i got to 
a second cow was um, Daisy was my first cow, and she was she's like an old Amish cow, so she milked gallons. I mean, I she had calf on her, and she still milked five gallons a day for me. And well, oh we can't gosh. utilize that much milk, and so I started selling raw milk because it is legal here in yep. Minnesota. All of a sudden. Her five gallons wasn't enough for the demand that I had. Mm -hmm. And so then I started milking one of our Highland cows who gave me an additional mm, gallon and a half to two gallons a day. And that was enough. Mm -hmm. That was, that's how I got to two cows. I never, I never had two dairy cows. You just had two cows in milk. I just had two cows in milk. Then it gets... It, we, it, everything changed out here. It and, all goes down. Yeah, from there. yeah. It's, well, it didn't go down. It up. just went. It went up by a lot. We had to sell Daisy because we couldn't get her to breed back. And okay. so there was a time where we didn't have a dairy cow out here, but it wasn't very long. And I'd been searching for a dairy cow to replace her. And you, as you know, it's not always so easy to find a dairy cow. It's not, especially when you had one and you have specific, yep. you know, markers for what you're looking for. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. And I knew what I wanted. And I just couldn't find what I was looking for. And then in that process, we decided that um, we were going to start dairying Mm -hmm. as a business and milk for Organic Valley. And so I went from one cow to two cows to no cow to milking about 32 cows or more, depending on where where I was at with my breeding cycle. And we did that for quite a while. And now we are back down to... Well, I'm milking 14 cows right now, and it will be more than that. I'll probably be milking 20 mm-hmm. when they calve in and stuff. But hopefully I'll sell a couple, and yeah. then I won't have quite so many. <laughs> well, well, we're taking one for sure, and yeah. then you'll never hear from us again. <laughs> <laughs> so that's that's kind of how I got to where I am today, and that's all we do. That's all we do for our farm. Our, we sell raw milk and um, cream. And we sell scrim milk as well. And we're looking at other things to sell um, regarding our dairy products. But we're not there yet. Almost to the point where the sales I make with the raw milk pays for the feed for the cows. That's perfect. It's almost, we're almost there. We're almost there. So that's kind of a nice feeling, but it's taking us a very long time. Absolutely. You're not just going to get there from day one. (laughs) Okay. So now we'll go back to your farm. Yep. And um, you say you don't have a lot of IQ. So you buy all your feed? We do. Okay. Yep. So so as far as feed, uh, Poppy, our milk cow gets maybe a pound of feed a day. Um, and, and you're so talking like grain. We're talking grain. Okay. Um, we currently do square bales because that is what's most convenient for us. Uh, we're looking into switching to round bales, obviously for two cows and we're raising our beef calf and then um, the goats and stuff too. So it just, we're just starting out, you know, and, and I think we go through, I put out right now in the winter, I put out a bale once a day. Of a square of the small square bales. Okay. In the summer, obviously she'll have fresh grass and pasture, mm-hmm. but um, I think we put one out maybe one at every three days. But we do supplement because it just it, it was kind of sandy and not great quality. So that's another thing we're working on is year your round we do have to supply hay. Yep. So if okay. you don't have if you have a dry lot, if you don't have, you know, awesome mm-hmm. pasture or anything like that, you have to be prepared to supplement with yeah and good hay quality isn't hay. Always it's easy. not easy to come by so yep. we have two hay producers right now that we're able to get our hay from and it's awesome quality hay okay so that's we don't good. we don't cheap out on that yeah that well we pay what, about seven, what you six put to seven in comes out so yep. you know you want to you want to make sure that you have exactly. a good, good quality hay so that they're they're um, healthy and yep, they're, they're healthy and they can they can produce exactly. milk on that particular hay because yep. that does make a difference too. You know, they, they do talk about jerseys tend to milk off their backs and mm-hmm. so you do have to see how that works and how much yep. you want to push production on your on yep. your cow. And that is part of the reason why we started giving her a grain um, just a little bit because of her history when mm-hmm. she was with you, I just wanted to play on the side of caution. Mm-hmm. I'm not against the grain. However, I'm very picky about it. <laughs> um, so she does get a no corn, no soy, um, high quality grain um, just to keep a little bit of meat on her bones. Dairy mm-hmm. cows are supposed to be thin, but the winter well, coming, I was afraid she was going to lose right lose um, condition. Yeah. So And you know, we never know what our winter is going to be like. Actually, exactly. our winter this year has been... Ha- actually fairly warm it has it been. really had i mean we had that cold spell right there before christmas but yep. um other than that we do get really a, cold, a few bad. cold spells <laughs> yeah throughout our six months of winter <laughs> 
but really it hasn't been that bad. Mm-hmm. I mean, I've, I've dairied long enough that I know this is a very mild winter yep. for us. So I know when you were out here last, um, we talked just a little bit about finding that cow in your list. Mm-hmm. And you had mentioned that I talked you out of buying a heifer calf and raising it. Yep. Do you remember why I told you that or what my There's reasons were? There's a couple of reasons why. Um, <laughs> a, because we had never had cattle experience. Um, heifers can be crazy and oftentimes hard to handle. And the fact that you wanted me to have experience with a cow prior to taking a heifer. Mm-hmm. You wanted us to just get <laughs> get our hands on that first, which yeah. I totally agree with. Yeah, there's there's several reasons to pick a, a cow, especially if you if you don't have any milking experience. Mm-hmm. You want a cow who knows her job and she knows what she's supposed to do yep. and that type of thing. And now granted Poppy went from machine milking yep. to hand milking, but she adjusted. Like a champ. Yeah, she adjusted yep. quite well. So that can be an adjustment period for a cow. Like you said heifers can be quite notorious for being when they first calf. Yeah. (laughs) And you know, if you don't have experience with a large animal, a heifer can be just an absolute terror to train. When you have a cow who knows what her job is, she can train you. And um, not that Poppy milked for very long here because she did, she, she lost condition. And I, for for her benefit, I stopped milking her because I just didn't think it was healthy for her. And that's not an unusual for thing for me to do here. Mm-hmm. I will stop milking a cow if I don't think that she is doing Absolutely. well enough. And you knew that going in, yep. what we had done. Yep. So we and, had prepared for that. Yep. And she, she did beautifully. And I figured it was just simply because she had lost her calf mm-hmm. and we just she had a, Yep. And there's just a lot of stuff going on for her. And she did beautifully this time. She had a, health, she had a healthy little calf, heifer calf actually, yep, which did. we were hoping for. <laughs> and calf. it sounds <laughs> terrible, but yes, we were hoping for that beef calf. So. Yeah. Yeah, and but going, I mean, here on out, I mean, truly, it doesn't matter. We'll have a beef calf, you know, every mm-hmm. year. Yep, and it's not like you can't butcher no, a female. You can't, you just hate, you <laughs> yeah, hate to it, think about yeah, that because yeah. they have so much, you know, purpose. Yeah, there's there's so much potential there. You know, those were my, those are my main reasons for telling people, you mm-hmm. know, if you don't, if you don't have experience with large animals, you really shouldn't start with yep. a bottle calf. I don't care if you want it to bond with you I or whatever. I think the bottle calf would be different though. That's the, you know, the fun part. And then yep. once they get to their teenager years, like where our beef calf is now, I don't think I would. <laughs> well, you know, and just trying to milk a heifer for the first time yeah. is, is, can be very difficult. I mean, yep. I, I have, I have ones that stand like Poppy and do just fine and, and never bat an eye at it. And the next one is kicking the milkers and just, uh, I mean, just Pure chaos. <laughs> yes. Yes. I've had things falling on my head because they're so wild and I have a parlor where I can squish them in yep. and I still have major problems. So I always think that it's better off to start with a cow. And I know the I, calves I are agree really cute. After this. Yeah. yeah. And you know, there's other advantages too. You are, you know, the cow can be bred. You know that she's not a free, a Martin, free Martin, which is a, a sterile heifer. You can taste her milk if mm-hmm. she's in milk. Now, Poppy wasn't in milk. She was you, not. Yep. yep. She was just, she was bred, but she wasn't in milk. Um, so you can taste the milk, make sure it tastes okay. You can see if she's got mastitis. Mm-hmm. You can see how her udder looks when it's filled out. You know, there's just a lot of things. Unknowns. She, yep. Yeah, there's a lot of things you can look for on a cow that you cannot see on a heifer who's never calfed. That That's probably covers it. the main the main reasons. Is there anything you wish you would have known? before you purchased her, before you purchased your first cow? Did you think, oh, I should have, I should have done this or done that? There's or, always going to be, you know, the what if I did this different or whatever like that. But truly, no, we were ready. We had talked, you know, months before we actually picked her up. Mm. But in the end, I think we were pretty well prepared. Oh, that's I, good. I read the Keeping a Family Cow book from front to back <laughs> and, you know, did my normal Google searches. Mm-hmm. And I... I think we were ready. The only thing I wish we would have done differently, like before we got her, was do a little bit more on the calving. Okay. Research on the calving. You know, I'm just, a lot of people are, you know, it's natural to them and stuff like that. But the hour it took Ruthie to get up and walk was scary to me. I knew she had to get up and nurse and stuff Uh like that. But um, that part was scary. Okay. To know that, it is okay for them to, <laughs> you know, take a little bit, I mean, a little bit longer. Um, and I could have intervened a little less, but I think that's I it. I know I have, I have a hard time even when mm-hmm. a cow is calving 
not to want to jump in and assist. Exactly. Cows have all the time on their own and everything right. is fine and I have no idea what's going on. Yep. So it seems like it's forever when you're standing there yes. and you're watching yep. and whatever. And yeah, it is. It's it's a little tricky. And, it is. It's, and, it's scary. I mean, you don't want you want to help. And I mean, obviously they don't speak to you, but they know what they're doing, whether or not the outcome is, you know, what you want. But Right. So yeah, sometimes you just need to be patient, yep. which and, I'm terrible at. Yeah. Well, you know, then you read all the, oh, I had to pull this calf and, exactly. and all those things. And that's all, yeah, it's all going through your head, you know, because you look at those groups on Facebook exactly. or whatever and trying to, trying to learn, yep. you make sure everything is going fine. And I'm just glad she did just fine, yeah. you know, because her first calf yep. she did deliver was stillborn. Yep. And that's, I always give my cows a second chance. They always get a second chance here. Okay. So now we touched a little bit about uh, what you would do different. Now, I know there's something you're going, you are going to do different this Mm -hmm. time. And what is that? I have no idea. You don't remember? Oh, you're like, we'll never leave a calf on a cow again. Oh, calf sharing. (laughs) Yes. No, we will never do that again. So many people do it and it's convenient for them. Um, Mm -hmm. However, Poppy, in our experience, wants to feed her calf. She Mm -hmm. will not. She'll give us, even if Ruthie is nursing on the other half, she'll give me less than a quart. Um, And normally she milks. And normally she milks about a gallon and a quarter, roughly, um, (laughs) twice a day. Uh So I, Ruthie... Was a well-fed calf. <laughs> um, so no, calf sharing is a no-no. I I have that same feeling too, is that mm-hmm. sometimes the calf sharing isn't worth it. Mm-hmm. You know, if, if you're looking for what you're doing, yep. you know, some people are like, well, I want her to be a nurse cow and I'll just take milk exactly. when I need it or whatever. But that's not what you were looking for. Mm-hmm. You were looking for a production cow so that you didn't well, have to buy even, your dairy products right. at the grocery store. Yeah. You know, and then at that point, I mean, when she started holding her milk, um, we had two people buying weekly milk. And so I was stuck between giving them our milk or, hey, we don't have your milk this week. Mm -hmm. So at what point do we have to make some changes? (laughs) That was a hard, a hard, you know, because I don't like letting people down. You know, I didn't want to say, but I did. I had to, I called off purchase of milk for about six weeks. And that's when we decided we needed to get Ruthie a friend and (laughs) fully separate them. And I, I will never do it again. (laughs) <laughs> nope. I'll see. I, I, you know, I do leave my, our calves on our cows occasionally, you know, depending yep. on what's, what's going on and if we need the milk or don't need the milk or yep. whatever. But I do have an issue sometimes with a heifer calf. I don't mind so much with the bull calves, but with a heifer calf, you leave it on mom and then she thinks she can nurse on mom for yep. the rest of her life. And that and was going to be our situation had we kept Ruthie, which mm-hmm. is why we needed to sell her. Successfully yep. done that. You Ruthie found a family is, for yep. her. We did let her go to a family that has never had cow experience. Um, she's in contact with me with any questions, um, but so far she's doing well. They plan to breed her and use her as their milk cow. So I guess we'll find out what <laughs> oh, that I in a, year, they, in a I year's hope, time yeah. <laughs> when she's ready. You know? I, I hope they have good luck. I mean, not every heifer is a disaster. Yep. I mean, I, and honestly, I don't think she would have been a disaster. She was a very, I mean, with our three kids, she was very touched from day one. Um, so being handled and, you know, that kind of situation, I don't think she would, I think she'll be good. But it's the whole nursing on mom which we can't have. You got to find a home for your baby at some point. Now, some see, like point. I told you, it would have been better if she was been a boy. I know. <laughs> and that's terrible to say, but I mean, everybody wishes for those, those heifers, you uh-huh. know, and here I am wanting a, <laughs> a bull. <laughs> oh, but yeah, I know that's the one thing you had said that you would, you, you're not going to do that again. Yep. Definitely. Um, uh, okay. Um, and like I said, I do, I, I, I leave calves on, I, I take them off and mm-hmm. lots of, for me, lots of times it depends on the time of year they're born. And right. This, yep. So, I mean, obviously we're going to try and shoot for warmer weather calving. Um, but the next calves from here on out, we'll leave on for a few weeks and then bottle feed them. Um, so they're going to get, you know, that connection mm-hmm. with mom. Um, I don't think calf sharing will work unless for some reason stuff changes. I don't know. <laughs> but Poppy is a good mom and... And she, she fed her calf well. Oh, she thought she was supposed to feed the baby and not feed you, I guess. Yep, huh? yep. I know. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's nope. nothing wrong with a cow who's like that. Because, I mean, it actually was okay for you because mm-hmm. you actually hurt your I back. Yep. And so you didn't weren't able to milk her or whatever. I think it was and probably about two weeks that I, I would still go out and milk 
the goat. The kids helped me with the goat, Mm -hmm. um, but I didn't touch the cow. So that's probably why her, uh, her production went down, I think, um, because I wasn't there milking those two times a day. Okay. Ruthie was just draining her all day long. And, and she I'm didn't sure have... she learned that <laughs> yep. the calf is getting it all. And yep. so, yeah, whatever, you yep. know. Well, because she was milking two gallons yep. when, we, when she first calfed. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. And well, the calf will eventually take it all. Exactly. Um, as they grow. Um, but, you know... It, it, in that situation, you know, it wasn't so bad it having a calf it was a, on there. It was a blessing. <laughs> yeah, you know, but... <laughs> I didn't have to worry about that. All I had to do was But then you've them. got all this stuff after that, and, yeah. you know, and that's not always so easy to deal with either. No. Um, and I know you're hoping to keep Ruthie for your we next were. cow. And now we're going to take a short break to hear from our sponsor. Family-owned PeteCoSupply.com brings small-town customer service to their online farm store, PeteCoSupply.com specializes in automatic waterers from top brands such as Miraco, Jug, Franklin, Trojan, and Ritchie, as well as other products for your operation. Find your farm supplies and automatic waterers at PeteCoSupply.com. That's P-E-T-E-C-O-Supply.com. Petco Supply. And we're back. <laughs> Oh, go back to raising a heifer, mm-hmm. and st- you know, having a heifer calf to raise instead of um, buying a cow. It takes 18 months, 18 months. to it's a, an two investment. years. And that honestly, it's cheaper to buy a cow mm-hmm. in milk than it is to raise yep. a calf from bottle to calving. So calving. Just, yeah, okay. you know, it, it honestly, <laughs> you'll yep. never make I that think, money up. I think the idea of having a heifer born, you know, the first calf born on our property, uh-huh. um, having it be a heifer, you know, just that the wheels are turning. Like, you know, this is going to be so magical. You know, it's, she's born on our property and then, you know, two years down the road, she's going to be our milking cow. I think that's the idea that everybody has in their heads. It's kind of a romance In hindsight, type, yeah. it's like, you know, do you really want to wait and feed this this animal mm-hmm. for, you know, two years. No, <laughs> I don't like waiting. <laughs> so as fun as it would be, we are still connected to the people who have her and we'll still be able to You'll watch to, her. Yep. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yep. Like me, I'm, st- exactly. I'm still, like, Poppy's still mine. <laughs> <laughs> You're just watching her, yeah. you know, evolve <laughs> vicariously through me. Yes. Yes. Here's another thing that you did. You started out hand milking and then you decided to buy a machine. Bought a really expensive, fancy machine and sold it. Explain why. Why you went from hand milking, you decided you want a machine and then you went back to hand milking. I think in the frustration of the first week of her calving, um, there was a lot of edema. There was a lot of milk. It was uncomfortable for her and it was uncomfortable for me. And because she was such a good mom, she didn't want me (laughs) down there at all. (laughs) It's not like she was kicking or anything like that, but it was the dead of summer. It was hot it was fly season Mm -hmm. and it was miserable for everybody so i bought a mealisty milker it's one of the higher top rated ones um tried it out twice by myself and said no and then waited for dustin to get home (laughs) and tried it again and said nope and we just it's not the machine it was the process okay it was bringing hot soapy water out to the barn because we don't have hot water out there Uh and bringing all this water out and the process of cleaning and disinfecting and just that did not work for me. Um, 15 minutes to hand milk. I'll take that any day. As I say, it's, a lot of people say that if you've got one cow, by the time you have to wash all your equipment and everything, no. it's, it's faster just to milk into a pail. Totally um, faster. Yep. I My first two cows, you know, the beef cow and the mm-hmm. dairy cow they milked, I milked them by hand. Milking five gallons out of a cow and then another gallon and a half out of another cow. That, that, that's a lot. <laughs> that's a lot. And it took its toll on my hands. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So I don't hand milk. I strip my cows yeah. and I will if somebody needs to be stripped completely out or hand milk mm-hmm. for whatever reason it is, um, I can do that. But my hands are very sore afterwards. I would not be able to hand milk yep. a cow today. Well, now, it will, it will be interesting when you add your second cow. It will cow. be interesting, but I'm hoping that once we get the fine tuning of their breeding and their calving cycles, it'll be one cow, you know, for, for not very long. <laughs> you won't um, have two cows. Du- you won't be dual milking it'll be, or whatever. There'll be a dry period obviously before Mm -hmm. the other one calves but 
I think I think it'll be okay. But then again, we got three minions that can be. <laughs> it's going to say you've got little kids that are growing up that yep. can also help with that milking process. Exactly. And they've already got experience with the because goat. they've done with goats now. Yep. Granted, a cow is much bigger. But if you have the right cow, mm-hmm. a kid can milk it. Or even half of it. We'll figure it out. Yeah. But we'll, honestly, I mean, when I first started hand milking, it was it was a half an hour. Mm-hmm. Just because I, my muscles in my arms and hands were not acclimated to that. Now it's 15 minutes, maybe. So it takes you about 15 minutes mm-hmm. to milk a gallon and a half out of Poppy. And out she does, Poppy. Yeah, and she milks on for all four quarters. Yep, all four. Oh, one, she's bad. got one that doesn't have quite as much, but I mean. Oh, most cows. Most cows like do. That. So yeah, there's a, they have a light quarter yep. or whatever. That's not unusual <laughs> she's at always, all. She's that always, that was Ruthie's favorite one. So I joke that she <laughs> sucked it dry. <laughs> Um, but no, 15 minutes and that's to wash, to, to strip, to milk, to dry. And then we put right now, because it's winter, I put the salve on that we Mm -hmm. make. So that's, that's not bad at all. Nope. She lets down real, real easy in the beginning and then it's kind of a chore, but. And I think you told me you can, you can milk her just about anywhere. anywhere. You don't really need her tied, stalled. And nope. anything you this can morning just... I, I milked her while she was eating her hay <laughs> <laughs> but i typically don't i mean nope just where she's at so 99 percent of the time she meets me at the gate and it's right there okay. or in the lean tube do but... you sit on a pail or kneel on the ground a how do you crate. milk her <laughs> a milk crate okay okay As... or i or i kneel okay. whatever because the the snow wherever she's at whatever's too high oh i didn't think about that mm-hmm. yeah so, oh. typically it's the milk crate just the okay. you know the four gallon milk crate but okay Nice. Yeah. She's yeah. perfect. I mean, yeah. <laughs> it'll be, it'll be different adding in the new one that we end yes, up choosing. Can but say, Cause the couple that you're looking at, they have a little bit of sass to them that mm-hmm. I don't think Poppy has. And so it yep. might be a little bit different for them. Um, anyway, yeah. we're looking at those later. <laughs> <laughs> Any advice for a first time cow owner, homestead cow owner? If you're questioning it, do it. Always go with your gut. It's scary. Mm-hmm. it's scary I'm not gonna lie there's times where I look out there and it's like is she still out there or like <laughs> you don't you don't know you always hear horror stories of yep. you know cow is wandering the highway <laughs> and or is she laying down too long or it, you know it's just do it do your research before don't just I think that's that's really good advice yeah and don't be afraid to talk to people who own mm-hmm. a cow or even your local dairy, you know, or whatever, go and talk to them a little bit about cows. Um, I think one of the biggest things you should have if you're looking at um, adding a cow to your homestead is finding someone to mentor you. Yes. Someone who's got experience with cattle, whether it be a dairy farmer or right. just another homestead person or whatever. But um, it's nice to be able to talk to someone. Throw who, things back yeah, and forth. And be and like, uh, hey, what's this going on or what's that? And you'd see, talk you yeah, off yeah, ledges. <laughs> I was going to say, if you saw Kelsey and I's <laughs> chat sometimes. <laughs> yep, but, I agree. Yeah, you, I mean, it doesn't have some ha- sort of and, yep, and an it influence. Doesn't, it doesn't have to be the person you bought the cow from. Mm-mm. It can be whoever. It's, just, it's sometimes nice to have another set of eyes, experienced eyes, mm-hmm. to take a look at something. Because you can type all you want on Facebook and ask And you're going to see the negative. And you see, and you get so many different responses. One says you need to do this, and the yep. other one says like the exact opposite and whatever. And... My previous time being here, we talked about having a vet. Mm-hmm. We do a lot at home, mm-hmm. but it is good to have a vet to, yes. to be able to fall back on. Yes, because sometimes you don't know. Mm-hmm. You don't know what's wrong and you need a, you need a vet. Totally um, agree. You know, I mean, including I have uh, friends who bought themselves a Dexter and had her home for like a week and a half and she got sick. They're like, she's not acting right. And they showed me video and all this stuff and they, they're not that far from me there may be a half an hour away from me or whatever and I was like well I don't know she shouldn't have milk fever you know trying to run through everything and she's like well I don't think she's doing well and I said well you know if your gut tells you to call a vet call a vet nobody's gonna be mad yeah yeah you're gonna hate yourself for not doing that yeah and she did and she had a case of um acid acidiosis Mm -hmm. um and because they had switched the grain on her 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 rumen acidosis yeah yeah and she they had changed the her feeding regimen just a little bit quickly and you know when they brought her home because they had her home for and yeah Mm -hmm. and that's what he diagnosed her with and so they did their i don't know they put baking soda out and i don't know like he gave her a bunch of medication or something or another and she's back to back to back herself to or whatever you know yep. but yeah that freaked them out and they were very very new to cows and so that just totally freaked them out she's doing fine 
you know, yeah, they, yeah, they, they spent money on, yeah, because it was a de- registered Dexter. Yep. They are not cheap. And so they would certainly did not want to lose their cow, you know, after spending Absolutely. that money after a week and a half, you know, type thing. And I can't they, imagine. Yeah. I mean, they did, they did their research. They went to the farm and they actually milked the cow before they brought her home and they oh. tried to keep the food as it close to the same, but they think the hay was a little different and they needed a little bit higher quality hay for her. Sure. And that was, that was the big thing, but she's doing fine now. And if you need to call, yeah, having a vet or, yep. you know, is having really worst case and, you know, just your general questions, have those people. And I know some people live remotely and there's no animal vet. And then you you need to know that. Exactly. And you need to figure out how you're going to vet your cow. Yeah. Because um, it, should it she need it. Yeah. And yep. I feel like the people who jump into it and the people who live remotely who don't have easy access to something that or a vet that can help, that's they get worst case. Yeah. You know, in finding a large animal vet is not easy. Mm-hmm. To and pay. these days take new well not even like new clients you can be an established client and they're not taking your new animal yeah i mean we're lucky here mm-hmm. where where i live because we are surrounded by dairies yes and so we have like Access three clinics that. that have um large animal vets yep you know they each one only has maybe one or two doctors and then you yep. got an emergency you're gonna you have don't to wait have time the yeah. next in yeah, line yeah, you yeah know? next in line so it's nice to um, be able to handle most of that yeah if you can handle most of that on your own but sometimes you need a vet mm-hmm. sometimes you just need one it's yep. like just for yourself sometimes you need a doctor sometimes you do sometimes <laughs> you just need a doctor you no, know you need, you need help so I just think that having a mentor or whatever is really important so you can absolutely you can you know bounce up something off of them you know hey you know i mean you do it all the time with me you know yeah yeah. i talk you back off the edge you do you (laughs) sure do (laughs) and then we're all good again (laughs) yep we're back Um, to sunshine and rainbows yes yes. you said you um got a cow so that you wouldn't have to get your dairy Mm -hmm. at another farm or buy it at the grocery store and now you have accomplished everything but ice cream ice cream and that is because i don't have an ice cream maker (laughs) that i like i had one yep yeah, send I know you, t- you said you sent it back. <laughs> you sent a lot of things back. Right? I know I do. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I mean, that's that's quite an accomplishment because that's is. something I have not done. Mm-hmm. Now, I will say that you have encouraged me and I've made two batches of cheddar cheese since this past week. Good. Well, I didn't, but our press is not ready for pressing. And so everything turned into curds. And yep. Jamie took a whole bunch home and fed it to her family. And did I did you like a, them? Yes, she did like them. They Good. liked them very, very much. Good. And so then I made I made another batch and um, we were eating them last night when, when Jamie and Bob were over um, for our regular Friday night get together yep. um, and stuff. So, but I have another uh, four gallons sitting down in the barn waiting for me to turn into something hopefully we can get the press set up here and then we can actually press it because yep. eating cheese curds after a while i would it like to have some, yeah, i would like to, to have start some frying them of, <laughs> yes i would like to do something else besides just cheese curds but and i did try the the caramel the way the caramel. caramel yeah i did another batch and Good. my second batch turned out much better i did you, th- you I, simmer I, it I cooked down, it longer cooked it and made sure it was down to half right it turned it's out perfect. it's it's really good and yeah jamie's got samples of that stuff too and she's <laughs> It's a, it, that one baffles me. Yeah. How can you turn the, you know, the portion, the liquid portion of cheese into a sweet I delicacy? Know. I don't it know. It tastes it like me. caramel. It is. It's, it's amazing. Yeah. The yeah. kids find it in the refrigerator and they stick their finger in it. And I'm like, <laughs> no. <laughs> it's, yeah, that it's one really, baffles it's, me. Yeah, it's really good. So I think we'll probably come back and maybe discuss cheese making yep. or something at some point um, when you're back here, if we can figure yep. out how to do a... Maybe when we pick up our cow. Yeah. (laughs) Oh, that's right. You're going to be coming back, but we might be able to figure out how to do it remotely Remotely. too. Would be fun too. Yeah. If we can figure that out. Um, Anything else you'd like to add? What do you Um, got for me? Okay. Well, how about um, we talk a little bit about cheese here. Now, were Mm -hmm. you making cheese with raw milk before you got your cow? Mozzarella. Okay, that was you, about didn't, it. you didn't do cheddar or anything. I did so not do cheddar. That was all we... new to you when you when you when mm-hmm. Poppy started milking. Yep. Oh, so you really haven't been doing it trial so here. I thought you've been doing this for two years. No. Nope. Wow. No. Nope. That's impressive because you've got some very lovely cheese. Thank you. Yes. You do. <laughs> <laughs> when I do things, I uh, I go full. I go I go all in. If if it's if it's not right, I fix it. Okay. I don't just, you know, throw it away and never do it again. Wow. Yes, that's impressive. Yep. That's very impressive. Thank you. Um, wow. 
Hmm. <laughs> no, no, honestly, I figured no, you well. Mozzarella was about all we did. And then I tried Colby with the most recent farm that we got milk from. Um, and it was okay, but it's definitely one that needs to be aged. I didn't do it again until we had Poppy. So and sometimes it's a little easier when you're not right out paying, paying for the milk. For it. I yes. mean, you're still I, paying I, for the I, milk. Yes, you, I get you know, what you're saying. Yeah, you're still paying for the milk because she's your cow and you exactly. have to feed her. But it's a little bit easier to Different. to um, you know that you can just well, wait and, a day and you can go back out and you got another two gallons of milk or exactly. whatever. You know. So if it doesn't turn out, you know, yeah. we give it to the chickens or yeah. whatever. Yeah. But it just it just it makes you cringe when you have to dump out. You know. Twenty dollars worth of milk. <laughs> right, right. Um, I'm very impressed with what you had learned well, in that um, short period well, that was our, of time. That was our so, goal. Yeah, well, well my you, goal at wow. least. Wow, that's that's yep. very very impressive. Yeah, because last... I've been milking cows for years, and I still <laughs> the perfected well, cheese come making. Hang out. <laughs> <laughs> I am by no means a perfectionist in it, but I want it to resemble. You know, I hate to say resemble the store product, but that's what we're used to. The kids were very picky about certain things until I nailed the cottage cheese recipe. We didn't buy cottage cheese, so now they eat eat it all when I make it because it's what they're used to yep. now. It, so I needed something similar to the store to make that transition easy. That's what my goal was. Oh, yeah. Did well. Yeah. Thanks. Hooray for you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I know you want to go out and meet my cows again. I, 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 I can answer can. any more questions you got. <laughs> I'm just trying to think if there's anything else I've, I've gone over what I had written down here. Well, I guess my biggest question is what was it like going from one cow to two cows? And what was the worst part? What was the worst part? Okay, so... Daisy was my first cow, mm-hmm. and she milked five gallons a day. I milked her once a day, and mm-hmm. we calf shared. She had a bull calf for me, okay. um, and she still milked five gallons a day, even with the calf on her. And he was he was fine. Yep, yeah. he was oh fine. My gosh. Yep, and you know she raised him. I never I I bottle fed him. I think, believe his colostrum to start with, and that is the only bottle he ever got. She raised him, and she raised. Oh, I don't know. I think another four or five Highlander calves mm-hmm. for us during that lac- first lactation of sure. hers that she had here. And then what's with, so we, I started selling raw milk because I couldn't utilize all that milk and mm-hmm. she calved in January. So our Highlander calves don't arrive until spring or over summer. So yeah. I had to do something with all this milk. And so I started selling it. Then of course I had too many people wanting and I'm like you, I aim to please, I want to, I don't want to turn anybody exactly. away. If you want raw milk, I want to provide it for you. And so then Rich is like, well, I don't know if we want to get another cow, but <laughs> you know, Hannah's out there and we had a, a fold of Highlander cattle and Hannah was out there and she was a purebred registered Scottish Highland cow. And she just happened to be an old show cow. She was showing at one time. And so she was halter rope. And so... That's what we did. We, we we brought her in. She calved, and she had a little heifer. Um, we brought her in, and once you get through the hair, <laughs> yeah, that would be the <laughs> the most difficult. I you know, because I mean, they're they're are long. they hairy everywhere underneath? Yes, her, her, yep, her okay. udder was fairly hairy, but so it was a little bit more. It was a little bit more to clean her, and that type of thing. But you know what? She was she was food motivated, so it wasn't hard, and she knew. It, yep. it took her nothing to figure out how to put her head in a stanchion because we had a dairy barn. Yep, yep, she just tilted her head and put her head in there. And as long oh as there, gosh. as long as there were whole oats in front of her, she was just fine. But the only problem with her was she would not let her milk down unless her calf was with her. The calf had to be near her. The calf did not have to nurse. The calf that the, is the, crazy. The calf had to be next to her, and then she let all her milk down for me. And so Blondie was her baby. Okay. And um, I got to the point where I just took Blondie and I just put a halter on Blondie, tied her to the... To the she could see her. Yeah, well, I t- actually tied her where um, Hannah's head was Okay, and let her eat with Hannah. Okay. So she ate grain with, with Hannah and Hannah would just milk for me just fine or whatever. And it was easy to milk her because she only milked a gallon and a half. I was used to taking five gallons out yeah. of Daisy. And so Hannah learned real quick that coming into the barn and milking meant she got oats. Yeah. And so she would literally race Daisy to, <laughs> I'd, I'd walk out of the barn and I'd be like, okay, girls, time to milk. And here comes Hannah. With her. And she was what? 
eight years old, eight, nine year old cow. So she had big horns, mm-hmm. you know, or whatever. And she'd just come running and she'd be like, oh, Daisy, get out That's of the way. That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> so, but it wasn't, it wasn't hard transitioning. Um, um, now maybe if she would have been milking four or mm-hmm. five gallons, I probably wouldn't have been able to do it by hand. I probably couldn't have done that. That would have been too much for me. Um, but yeah, she was, it wasn't hard to transition you know, from one to two cows. Hannah only milked for about six months. Once she was ready to wean Blondie, that was it. She was like, okay. I'm done with and you too. And that's pretty typical of a, a beef, beef animal. Yep. yep. I mean, I probably, if I would have really pushed it, I probably could have gotten her to milk more or whatever. But by that time, Daisy gave us enough milk. Sure. So that we were, you know, she had raised the other calves already. And so we were, we were good. That was, that's how I transitioned. And then well, you know the rest of the story. We yep. we, we bought a whole bunch of cows and then <laughs> milk for organic valley, and now we're yep. back down. We don't we don't milk for organic valley. We only do raw milk mm-hmm. direct to consumer sales. And you still sales. have all those cows. Well, most of the cows. I, I have seventeen of our dairy cows, and over most here. of them were with you when you did organic valley or no? no probably not because okay. i have some heifers now okay. that um you know we haven't milked for organic valley for three years. 2019 yeah we're creeping up on it'll be in the fall okay. be four years we haven't milked for them um so you know we did we downscaled mm-hmm. when we decided not when, when we gave up our contract for organic valley that's one of the reasons we had poppy for sale right is that we had too many cows here and um we needed to get rid of some and so we did a big sale thing and tried to move some cows out of here because i have a lot of super friendly cows that would make really good homestead cows mm-hmm. you know they're yep. used to being handled and we, we don't operate like a big dairy and so it makes it makes it a little easier for um us to have a cow transition into sure. that but um other than that i don't think it was i don't it wasn't that hard to move from one cow to two cows but i would not do what you were doing where you were going to try to you know i mean we do that now because i need to have milk right. year round and i don't um, know if it's going to happen right away but that's our eventual goal is yep. to have milk when Right. Not, you yeah. Know. yeah. And there's going to be time. It's going to have to overlap. Yep. You're going to be milking two cows yep. at a certain percentage of the time, mm-hmm. just because they're usually only dry for two, three two. months. Yep. You know, not that you can't dry them off a little earlier than that if you want, if you want, but hopefully you'll have some milk customers and you'll be able yes, to we have, provide. We have our you know, current yep. and we have a wait list. Yeah. And so you will be them, able so. to service those families, which will be a yep. wonderful thing. And the current customers will be able to have more because right. we, we we limit them to two <laughs> gallons right now. Actually, yep. we put some of them back to one gallon because in the winter they produce a little less to keep their bodies warm. So I didn't want to cut everybody short and... That makes sense. It'll make everybody happy. Yes, it sounds like it. (laughs) So, okay. Anything else? You have any other question for me? I don't 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 think think so. so. (laughs) Okay. Well, I want to thank you for co-hosting with me today. And I'd like to thank you for joining us on our podcast. We will see Jamie next week. And if you like this episode, give us a thumbs up and make sure you share it with your friends. Thank you very much. Thank you. We'd like to give a special thank you to PicoSupply.com for sponsoring our podcast. So until next time. Put some keeper on it. (laughs) Thank you for listening to the Homestead Podcast's latest episode. Your hosts, Carol Radke and Jamie Kappas, are Two Gals Homesteading. To learn more, go to TwoGalsHomesteading.com or the Two Gals Homesteading Facebook page at Facebook.com slash Two Gals Homesteading. Editing, audio production, and marketing of the Homestead Podcast is the responsibility of Media Trends X. The Homestead Podcast is an audio product of Media Trends X, a limited liability company, based in Minnesota, USA.